Now, there's somebody here today to show you an eye-opening demonstration about the water we drink and this remarkable machine from Japan. His name is Bob Gridelli. Hey, Bobby. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, thank you, Pat. Why don't you take over? Great, I will. So, I want to welcome everybody, and I'm going to go into the demonstration here, and I'm going to show you the three unique properties of this water and why it's so very special. The first property I'm going to show you is uh, what's called the ORP, which stands for the Oxidation Reduction Potential. And we're going to show you that with a meter that shows whether a liquid has a positive ORP or a negative ORP. And if it has a positive ORP, that means it's bad for you, or it's oxidizing, or aging, or rusting. We all know what that is, right? And so if it has a negative ORP, that's what makes it a powerful antioxidant. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to pour some of these liquids first. And we're going to start with the Sani. And these are, we just put together an array of liquids that most people drink, right? Did you drink any of this? The Sani? How about Aquafina? Yes, I think I used to drink all of these. And how about smart water? Yes? I'm a holistic doctor. You're a holistic doctor, okay. I'll show you what I call it in a little bit. How about the Arrowhead sparkling water? Yes, anyone like that water? They have different flavors. That's why I kind of like those, all the flavors. Actually, this was my favorite water. It's called the Live. In a second, you'll see what I call it. <laughs> How about sports drinks, Gatorades? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yes, everybody like those? I used to drink a lot of sports drinks because, you know, you see athletes drinking it, so it must be good for us. Mm -hmm. How about sodas? Do any of you drink sodas? Not not <laughs> okay, and this is just tap water. Anybody drink tap water? Occasionally. And then this is Kangen water. Okay, so... This is the pinpoint ORP meter. Now we're going to test the ORP of the Dasani. So notice Dasani is over 215 right now. Now we go to the Aquafina. How's the Aquafina? Two, we'll go over 220 and climbing. How about the Smart Water? Over 230 and climbing. How about Arrowhead? Over 315 and climbing, getting worse. Alive water. This was one of my favorite ones. 400, now I call it dead water. <laughs> How about Gatorade? Any of you drink Gatorade? Mm -hmm. Like 393 and climbing. So remember, the, worse, the more positive it is, the worse it is. How about 7-Up? Now, all sodas are pretty much the same, just we use a uh, light colored. So you'll see 394 and climbing. How about the tap water? 325. Here's the star of the show, you guys. <laughs> Look at negative what? Four over ne negative 400. Wow. Now negative 426. So as you can see, when it has a negative, this is the only water that has a negative. That's why they call it negative water in Japan. That's why they use it in hospitals over there, because all the positive ones are oxidizing, aging, rusting, bad you know, internally on the body. But the negative water is neutralizing the free radicals, so that's why we want to drink this water and hydrate your body on a regular basis. Next property I'm going to show you the water is we're going to go over here and we're going to test these waters for uh, the pH of the water. So pH stands for potential hydrogen and we have a little chart here where I'm going to show you and we're going to put a few drops in these waters and we're going to show whether they are on the acidic side or the alkaline side. And we'll just put a couple of drops in each one of them. We have a nice little pretty colorful display today, right? And we'll kind of stir these up real quick so you can get a better look and then I'll show each one of them. Oop, let's clean that off. Oop, let's clean it off each time. Okay. 
So let's go start here with the Dasani water, and we'll, we'll use this pH chart here and show. So the Dasani is what? Very acidic. On the acidic side, right? How about the Aquafina? Also acidic. Also acidic. How about the Smart Water? A little better, but still acidic, right? How about the Arrowhead Sparkling? Very acidic. Very acidic. How about the Alive Water? That's why I call it dead water now. <laughs> how about the Gatorade? Oh, very acidic. Also very acidic. And how about the 7-Up? Very acidic. Bet you didn't know you were drinking so many acidic things, did you? No. How about tap water? It's neutral. So right around neutral, right? So tap water is always going to be neutral to slightly alkaline because it's federally regulated by the government. So besides, you know, the chlorine, the fluorides, they put lye in the water, which is a pH of 14, very alkaline, to raise the pH of our city water, the tap water, because if it were acidic, it would rust the pipes. So I don't think they're concerned about our pipes. They're concerned about the city pipes. So that's why it's always going to be in that range. So let's move on to the Kangen water. Now here's the star of the show. What is the Kangen water? Wow. Very alkaline, right? So with a touch of a button, we can change the alkalinity, and this one is 9.5 pH. So we all know that we should be slightly alkaline, right, our body, because we're over 75% water. Unfortunately, look what we're drinking today and the foods we're eating and the air we're breathing. And so when you drink this water on a regular basis, just think about your bodily fluids, right? Now watch what happens. What did we just do? Just with a little of the water, we neutralize that and raise the pH of the water. We'll go to the Aquafina. Oh. Notice. What, well, how about the smart water? Oh. Notice I'm just putting in a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine when you're drinking this on a regular basis, what happened to the Arrowhead water? Oh, it was struggling and then yeah. it went right back to acidity. Mm -hmm. That's because it's very acidic. Mm -hmm. Notice the Alive water? Mm -hmm. No change. How about the Gatorade? Also no change. How about 7-Up? So now we'll go over to the tap water. Notice it changed pretty easily, right? So now when you're drinking this water on a regular basis, that's what it's going to help your body to do to balance your pH. Now, I'm going to take the 7-Up here. Now it's already diluted, right? Watch what happens. Now think about you're drinking this on a regular basis. Watch what happens when we just add a little bit of that. Notice it takes it right back to an acidic state, just with a few drops. If you're drinking these things, ladies, and th these are all pretty much in the same range, watch the Kangen water. Wow. We just destroyed the Kangen water with a little bit of diluted soda. If you're drinking sodas, this is right around the pH of about 2.5, which makes it about 50,000 times more acidic if you were starting over here at the neutral point. So that's how acidic it is. And I'm just going to show you real quick. This came from Wellness Magazine. And if you, it says, what does it show the equivalent of soda is? Battery acid. It shows soda equals battery. Your battery in your car, the acid level of the battery in your car equivalent to soda. So imagine, if we want to stay on the alkaline side, you definitely don't want to drink anything like this, right? So as you can see now, that's the second property of the water that makes Kangen water so very special and why you want to be hydrating your body on a regular basis. So now I get to show you the third property of the water, which is microclustering of the molecules. And so regular water, like tap water, is about 15 to 20 molecule clusters, whereas Kangen water is about four to six clusters, so much smaller. And you're going to get to see a visual when I show you that with these green tea bags. So this is Yamamoto green tea. It's a, a tea that I like. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, put one of these in here in the first cup. And what do you have to normally do to make tea? You have to heat the water. So we're going to take room temperature tap water. And notice what's happening. Nothing. It's not making tea, is it? That's because you have to boil the water to make tea. So we're going to take another tea bag and we're going to take the Kangen water. Notice what happens. What's happening to that tea bag? Tea. It's making tea instantly. Watch what happens when I go to pour again. 
instant tea, right? The smaller molecules are penetrating the tea bag and drawing the tea out of the tea bag. Okay, let's go to, let's take one, how about if we go back to tap water? No tea, right? So it's not a magic show, so you understand. It's just the molecules are too big to draw the tea out of there. We'll go back to Kangen water. Notice how it's drawing tea out of the tea bag. And notice this tea bag's still struggling over here, right? <laughs> so let's take it back over here and let's see if we can get tea out of it. Oh, notice, wow. instant tea with the Kangen water. So I think you can understand with the microclustering of the molecules being four to six clusters, much smaller, how it's drawing the tea out of the tea bag. Now imagine when you're drinking this water on a regular basis, it's hydrating the body better. So I think you can see that drinking Kangen water with the negative ORP, right, the uh, alkalinity and the microclustering of the molecules, this should be the water of choice for everybody to drink because it's far superior water and beneficial for the body. Now we're going to show you uh, some other properties of the water that we can use for different purposes in your home. And what we're going to do is we're going to use some uh, tomatoes here that I just got at the grocery store. So these are some uh, nature sweet tomatoes. And uh, how do you normally clean your fruits and vegetables at home? You rinse them in the tap water, right? So we're going to take these nature sweet tomatoes and I'll try to pluck these out really quick. And you rinse them in the tap water, right? So we're just going to simulate that by pouring some tap water in here. You ladies didn't know you were going to do a little taste test today, did you? <laughs> and we're going to take another bag of the Nature Sweet Tomatoes. And we're going to soak them in what's called strong kangen water. And strong kangen water is at a pH of about 11, 11.5. And the reason I put it in a black container is because three things affect the properties of the water. That is air, light, and movement. So we always store them in black containers when we make the water and we're going to use them. So we'll just soak some of the tomatoes with the 11.5 strong kangen water. And while those are soaking, we'll let those sit there for just a minute. And we're going to take some, this is pure sesame oil. And we're going to take some sesame oil, and I'm going to show you while those are soaking what this water can do to the sesame oil. Now, what happens, basic science, what happens when you mix water and oil? They don't mix, they separate. It doesn't mix, right? So notice how it's starting to separate. So watch when I take the same oil and put the uh, strong kangen water in there. What just happened? It emulsified. It emulsified or it mixed the oil. So we're going to show you today with this water how you can use it for different purposes at home to clean your produce. You can also use it, put it in a black spray bottle like I do, and clean the house with it. So we're all concerned about the chemicals in our home, right? So we can now get rid of all those chemicals and make water that you can use as a degreaser, a cleaner, your 409. You can replace all of those. So let's go back to the tomatoes. How about that? So remember, these were soaking in the in the tap water and simulating how you clean them at home. And I'm just going to scoop them out of here and try not to make a mess. Okay. That's the tap water. We'll set them right there. And then we're going to do a little taste test. Are you ladies up for a taste test today? Okay, let's get the, I call these Kangen tomatoes. Now, notice the difference. So. What can't, you thought you cleaned your tomatoes in the tap water, right? right. But did you really? No. no. Notice, what just came off the tomatoes? Everything. <laughs> Herbicides, pesticides, oxidation, anything that's on the produce, you know, because they use oil-based pesticides that don't wash off in the rain. So guess what? Regular water doesn't have the ability to take those off, but Kangen water has the ability to take them off, just like it broke down the oil over here. So let's go ahead and do... Let's pass these around. We're going to go ahead and have each one of you grab one of the Kangen tomatoes, I call them. And let's do a little taste test. Those are kind of big, so you might not want to bite them in half. I would just bite the whole thing, or you might get tomato on you. And so we're going to let them try the Kangen tomatoes really quick. Hey, guys, I'm Italian, and I didn't used to like tomatoes. That's pretty sad, right? 
But guess what? I found out it wasn't the tomatoes I didn't like. It was what was on the tomatoes that I didn't like. So how's the tomatoes? Very sweet. Are they pretty sweet? Mm -hmm. Not too bad? Yeah. OK, great. So now we're going to go ahead and pass these around. And this is the tomatoes that you normally, how you normally clean them and how you normally eat them. And let's see if we notice a difference or who can notice a difference in the They're taste. Sour. Oh, you got to get a picture of these faces. <laughs> Look at the face. Look at the difference in the taste. So that now you understand why I didn't like tomatoes. Like I said, it wasn't the tomatoes I didn't like. It was what was on the tomatoes that I didn't like. Everyone notice the difference? Absolutely. The first one was much better. The first one tasted more like you got it out of the garden, right? And it was natural and no pesticides, and it was sweet. Even the texture is a little different. And the second one, you guys, because guess what? You were eating the tomatoes with this on there. And that will definitely affect the taste. And guess what? When you clean your produce with this kangen water, the strong kangen water, your produce will last a week or so longer. So one of the other benefits of this technology and the different waters that we can make that you can use in your home for different purposes. So now I'm going to show you the technology that makes the different waters that we showed you in the demonstration. And this is what's called the SD501, the Leveluck SD501. It's the top of the line unit that we have, and it's the gold standard in our industry. So with the touch of a button, I'll show you what we do. We simply hook this up to the sink right here. As you can see, the ordinary tap water coming out of here. And by diverting the water into the machine, as you can hear, it talks to you. So right now, that quick, we're making the water. I'm going to shut it off just so we can hear. So water, as you can hear, 8.5 pH, so that's the alkaline drinking water. water 9.0. Water, and 9.5. So we have three levels of drinking water. The next water I'm going to show you in this green section is 7.0. It's just neutral water, and it says clean water. And it's for taking medication. So when you're taking medication, just use this water. And about 30 to 45 minutes later, you can go back to using the regular Kangen water. Now, when you're taking your nutritional products or natural products or green drinks, you definitely want to use the Kangen water because you want those to work much better, right? So you want those to be twice as strong and absorb much better. The next water. Beauty water. Beauty water. So everybody wants to look more beautiful, right? So you never have to buy toners again, because this water will rival your best toners that you buy in your department stores, $20, $30, $40 a bottle, $50 a bottle, because we simply change the pH of this water to about 5.5, and that's exactly what toners are, because it acts as an astringent to tighten, tone, and soften your skin. The next two waters. Strong acidic water. Strong acidic water. This is a water that's about 2.5 pH. And this water is very acidic, and how we make this water, by adding a salt solution that's being added to the tank as it's being electrically charged. So when you're making this strong acid water, coming out here is the strong alkaline water because we're separating the water. We have the strong acid water coming out this hose down here, the strong alkaline water coming out this hose because remember that pH scale of 14? We're always splitting that. So if we're making 2.5, subtract that from 14, and that's what's coming out here is the 11.5 that we use for cleaning. All right? So those are the different waters that we make. So let me talk a little bit about the technology and so you understand why this is the gold standard and why everybody compares themselves to Enagic. Because what's happening first, the water's first going through a double carbon antibacterial filter where it's filtering the water first. Then... It's going through inside of here what we call the engine of this machine. I'm going to show you something that nobody else shows you, especially these other machines, the so-called competition on the market today. Right back here is what is the engine, and this is seven large platinum-coated medical-grade titanium plates. And the water's passing through these plates, and it's being electrically charged with 230 watts of power. So, the two most important parts of ionization are the size, surface area, and quality of these plates and the electrical current that's happening to the water as it passes through the plates. So remember that, two most important qualities when you are looking 
add an ionizer. The next thing I'm going to show you, well, let's compare a few too. I'm just going to do this because they're never going to show you this. Some of the machines on the market today, the so-called competition, is not going to show you what the inside of their plates look like. Because look at the difference. Look at that. And they call this competition? Look how small they are, you guys. These are so cheaply made. That's why none of the ionizers can really do what this does. Now I think you get to understand why you don't want to go with anybody else. And this is the golden standard. One other thing I'll show you about what makes this the golden standard is we simply spin this filter off and we have what's called a manual cleaning cartridge. No other ionizer has this, this on the market. And because what happens to all ionizers are they start to build up with the, inside the plates, you'll get the scaling from the calcium that's in the water. And what happens to the other ionizers, they all have a self or automatic cleaning system. None of them are good enough to completely clean the machine. So we simply spin this off, put on our cleaning cartridge, and you can actually clean this machine anytime you want. So I use mine you know, more commercially because I give away a lot of water. So I put a cleaning cartridge on mine once a month. They recommend you do it every three to six months. So, but the fact is we can clean this anytime we want. That's why this will last 15 to 20 years. Five year warranty on everything. So I think you can see based on what I showed you today and you'll understand why this is the gold standard in the industry. So what I would do is get back to the person who gave you this video and they'll show you how you can get started and get one of these in your home so you can change your water and change your life.